Hi, I'm Joel. I'm Seth. And I'm Chloe. And welcome to Learning, Learning from, from Scratch. Today, I'll be showing you how to create a simple game in Scratch where you will help Santa find the present. So you'll be able to control Santa using up, down, left, right. It's like in all the other computer games, you know, when you can control the main character, and you make it move the way you want it to move. So without further ado, let's get into the game. Uh, please click on the link below so that we can have the same starting page. Okay, you'll be able to see a Santa and a present inside. All good, I'll assume you're there. So we click on see inside so that we can check on what's inside this project. But well, it's a really simple project. I know you wish I did it for you, but nope. We're starting from scratch. Right, so you see a center, you see a present. And now we look at the code, what we want to do under the code, the instructions that we're going to give center in this case, is we want to make it such that when I press up, he moves upwards, right? And similarly for down, left, right. So where do I find this? We find the up, down, left, right buttons, at least the controls for them, under this thing called events. Because when you click a button, it's considered an event. Now you drag it onto the stage, and you see, it says when space key is pressed, but actually, if you click down, you notice, ta-da, there's a whole list. Up, arrow, down, arrow, right, arrow, left, arrow, and you can dance with it. But let's click on up arrow. And now we want to move it upwards with the arrow. So, where do you think we'll find the moving upwards um, block? Correct. Ding ding! It's under motion because motion is about moving. Okay. So now let's focus on this this set of uh, four blocks here. And you can see there's an option to change x by ten, set x to this number. Change y by 10 and set y to 12. Okay, so which one do you think we'll be using for moving up and down? So let's rewind back to our math lessons. Remember there's the x-axis and the y-axis. So which one goes up and down? Okay, the answer is y. Because it goes up and down like this. Okay, so we'll find y. Change y by... And we drag it right underneath the event block. Okay. So now we have when up arrow key is pressed, change y by 10. Let me press on the y oh, sorry, let me press on the up arrow key now. And it's going up. Well done. To me, of course. Okay, now we want to make it go down. So what we can do is there's this duplicate function. It's like copy and paste. Let me move it over here. Actually, it doesn't really matter where uh, the code blocks are placed but we spread them out so that it's easier for you to see the instructions that you're giving center, the center sprite. Okay, now let's change it to when the down arrow key is pressed. Drop down, you click down arrow. And now, should we leave it as change y by 10? Not really, right? Because we know that change, if you leave it at change y by 10, when you press down, it will just keep going up. So this shows that center is just following the exact instructions you give it. So when you click down arrow is press, we need to change y by, you know, if up is a positive number, we need to make it go down. So we need to go past zero to negative numbers. So let's change it to change y by minus 10. Okay, does that work? Let's press the down arrow now. <gasps> Center's going down. Okay, that's great. So now we've settled up arrow, down arrow. Now we want our right and left. Okay, so we'll copy. You know the drill. Okay, now we move it to the side. Okay. Now instead of up arrow, we're going to change it to the right arrow. But now, you see it's still at change y by 10. Do you think it's still along the y axis? But now we want it to move left and right, right? So this axis, the horizontal axis is the x axis. So let's throw away the change y by 10. We throw it by moving it back to where it came from, and we pull up, change x by 10. And with this, when you press the right arrow, Santa's moving to the right. Okay, now one last arrow to manage. Let's get it. And we have the left arrow. So similarly, we click the drop down button, left arrow key pressed, and we're going to change x by, is it still 10? 
No, right? Because just now we learned, we use y, when y is minus 10, it goes down. And similarly, when x is minus 10, it moves backwards. In this case, to the left. So let's change x to minus 10. And with this, let's check. <gasps> it moves to the left. So now, centre moves up, right, down, left. Exactly per our instructions. So, you notice that just now when Santa moves to the right, he looks to the right. But when he moves, moves to the left, he still looks to the right. <sighs> this is not right. He needs to look left. If not, you know, we have to always look at the correct direction. And I want Santa to look at the correct direction. So what can we do? We can change his costumes. Costumes in a sprite is how the sprite looks. So if we all click on the top left-hand corner, you'll see costumes and you'll see that there's only one costume for Santa right now, right? It's the right-facing Santa. Now, I want to create a left-facing Santa so that I can always tell it when I press the left button, please look left. So what I do is I can create, I can duplicate this Santa costume. And now I have, instead of just Santa 1, now I have Santa 1, Santa 2. And for Santa 2, I want to make him look left. Can you see any button on this screen that will be useful for this? Ta-da! We look around and we see flip horizontal, right? That's exactly what we want it to do, flip the other way. So now I flipped it and I have a left-looking center. Great, so we're settled on the costumes front. Now let's go back to the code because the code is where we give it the instructions. Okay, so now it's center's looking to the left and when I press the right arrow, it's still looking to the left. So how do I control that when I press the right arrow, look to the right. When I press the left arrow, and you look to the left. Now, we look under the, under the section called looks. Right? Because how the costume, you know, the costume is precisely about how the sprite looks. Now, we see that, do you, do you remember which one is right and which one is left? So just now, I think we started with center one. Center one was the one that looks to the right. So let's pull this switch, costume two, and let's drag it under the right arrow. Drag it, we snap it here. Okay, switch costume to center one, right? When you're looking to the right. So now when I press the right button, hey, center's looking to the right. Now I need to make sure this happens also for the left side. So similarly, switch costume, I drag it under the left arrow. And now when I click left, Center looks to the left. So hey, center left, right, left, right. Center can join the army now. Can march very well. Okay, so now I can control center and I can make it find the gift. <gasps> eh? What's wrong? Center just goes on top of the gift and like nothing is happening. This is this is a good game in that you can control center, but it's really boring because nothing really happens when the outcome is met, right? So now I want center to say, found it! when it touches the gift. So, how do I go about that? So right now, I'm going to show you this interesting thing called control. You know, when you're in control, you can control people. And sometimes, it's to also give instructions so that when this thing happens, then you do this. Like, your mother say, right, if you never do your homework, then you cannot play game. So, I want you to say, if Santa touched the present, then Santa must say, found it. So there's this thing over here called if then. So we drag it under, let's just start with the up arrow. Uh, okay, it's a bit hard to get there. Let's go with the left arrow first then. Okay, so we know there's a condition we want to meet. So we want to say, if Santa touches the present, then I want it to say, found it. Okay, it's easier to do the say, found it part, right? Because Teacher Joel taught you last lesson. So let's go and uh, look at the portion where it says found it. So let's drag it here. We know that if the condition is met, if it touches, we are going to make Santa say found it. Found it. Sorry, not downed it. Found it. And you can say found it for one second because don't need to talk for so long, huh? Okay. But still, this is, this is really useless unless we can add the condition. So now we know, though, how, what's going to happen if the condition is met. Now we want to say, if it touches the present. So if you touch something, what happens? If you touch something, you are sensing it, right? 
your left hand sent to your right hand. And similarly, we have this sensing uh, bit over here. And you see, on top there's this touching blank, touching mouse pointer for now. So let's drag it in. Now since it's what happens if, right? We drag it inside the if block. Now I want you to take a look. Huh? Over here, very good. I hope you managed to do that too. You drag it right into that particular angular shape. Now touching what? Now you want to say, if it's touching the present, the present, okay, in this case, it's called the gift. So if, if it's touching the gift, then you say, then center will say, found it. So how does that work? You go, you move center, and it's because it's tagged the left arrow, right? Dun -dun. It says, found it. Center says, found it, and he finds the gift. That's great. But what happens if he touches it with his head? Because we go up. Oh, nothing still happens. Do you know why? It's because we've only added the if block to the left arrow button, right? As in, to that whole code block of the left arrow. So now we need to duplicate. Make sure that whether you press right arrow, up arrow, down arrow, whichever arrow you press, as long as you touch the gift, you want to say, found it. So let me make the duplicates real quick. Okay, it's a bit squeezy on this page, yeah? So you can move to the top right-hand corner here. This allows you a bit more space with your blocks. Okay, let me move them a bit. Alright, now I want to copy this block of code. So I click Duplicate, if touching gift, and I paste it under all the other blocks. Duplicate, paste it for the up arrow. Duplicate, paste it for the right arrow. Okay, let me spread them out a bit again. Okay, and now I'm back. Get back to this. So now we have all the logic blocks in place. So when we move center towards the gift, and he touches the gift, he says, found it. Now let's try from a different direction, yeah? Goes down. Yay! So we've done most of the logic, but now don't you find the game just a tad boring? Because you know, once he finds the gift, that's like the end of it. Now, to make this a game that you can somewhat play on and on and on, we want it to be a bit like a cat and mouse game, you know? Like when the cat touches the mouse, then the mouse runs away. So similarly, when Santa touches the gift, the gift runs away. How do we make the gift run away? Now first, we need to give these set of instructions to the gift. So let's click on the gift sprite. Ah, I bet you didn't know that you could give instructions to a present. Now, if we look at the gift sprite, um, firstly, we want it to always be looking out for whether Santa touches the gift, right? So you want to see, hey, is Santa touching me? Is Santa touching me? Or say, it's the same as, am I touching Santa? Am I touching Santa? So just now we learned that code block, right? On if touching. So let's pull that out first. We'll be using it later. Where was it under? It's under control, right? So we pull out if then this block. And just now we use the sensing block, right? If touching, we pull it here. And since now we're giving the gift instructions, instead of touching the gift, we'll say if it's touching center. And what we want it to do when it touches center is we want to tell it run away or go to somewhere else. Go to somewhere anywhere else on the board so that center can find you again. But how do we always ask it to check whether whether it's touching center? We use back this uh, concept called the events again. So we do when the flag is clicked. And so let's try to piece it together, okay? When the flag is clicked, check whether it's touching center. And if not, go somewhere to the board. So there's this concept, you know? People say like, ah, there are very random one, random one. Random means anywhere, right? So we want it to go anywhere else on the board. So first we need to say go. The fact that it needs to go means there needs to be some motion. So we can look at under motion for some block. And let's see, which block would be useful to us? Okay, there's this go to. Oh, in fact, there's this go to random position. This is exactly what we want, right? You want to say? <gasps> see, when I click on this block, the present is always going to a random position. Okay, so that's exactly what we want. We move it here. When the flag is clicked, check if the gift is touching center, then go to a random position. Okay, so now we click on the flag and we're all ready to see our gift go to a random position, yeah? So I click on the flag, 
And now we move centre. And he finds it. But the gift is not moving to a random position. What is happening? So, if you take a look, we can see when a code block is executing, when it is lit up entirely in yellow. So when we click on this green flag, you notice that that it's just like tick -a, tick -a, just, just for a second, it's lit up just for a second. This is because um, it just runs. At the moment in time, when you click the green flag, the gift is saying it's executing the code of am I touching centre? And since it's not nearby, it will say no. And then that's the end. So what we wanted to do, actually, throughout this game, is to be always asking, am I touching centre? Am I touching centre? Am I touching centre? Am I touching centre? Forever and ever, it's just always asking, am I touching centre? Am I touching centre? And this very block, forever, can be found under the control section. See? Does it sound not like for the first time in forever? For the first time in... Yeah. Now we put our if block in forever. And now, let's see what happens. Okay, so to start this whole block, we have to click the flag. So we click the flag. And now, we move near the gift. <gasps> and it moves away. It goes... Yeah, it moves to a random position. Wow, that's really fast though. It's like before you can even see it, it moves away. So, let's slow it down. Slow it down for our eyes, yeah? There's also a cool block over here in control called the weight. So you can add the weight into the loop. So you say if it's touching centre, okay, can you wait for a while, wait for a while, wait for one second, then go to the random position. Now let's see how it works out. Okay, so let's move close there. Oh, after one second, you see it move away. And now you travel to the other side. Found it, and it goes to another place. And so this, now you have a game that can go on and on and on for as long as you like to. And with that, we've come to the end of today's lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it in being able to learn how to control Santa, how to make the gift run away from Santa, and you know, just in general, putting all these together on Scratch. And I hope you can just let your imagination run wild and create other more interesting games. But speaking of other interesting games, in the next lesson, Samantha will be teaching you how to create a maze game where you'll be able to add more logic and make the game even more fun. So till then, uh, that's all we have for today. Thank you.